Solving a triangle means knowing all six of its measures, three sides and three angles. Now we're going to focus on the more general triangle that might not be a right triangle. We still need three pieces of information to start. The combination of measures we're given determines the category or configuration of the problem. Let's start with an example. In each of these triangles, we're given two angles and a side. In the first triangle, the given side is between the two given angles, so we'll call the first triangle ASA, which means angle side angle. The side is between the angles in the label to match the configuration of the known values in the triangle. The second triangle is AAS. The given side is not the side between the given angles, so the S is not between the A's. It doesn't matter which of the two sides is given, the configuration is simply AAS. Each possible configuration of three given angles and sides has a three-letter name. Each letter can only be A or S, so there are eight possible combinations, and here they are in alphabetical order. Sometimes students are taught a specific strategy for solving each of these configurations. Solving an ASA triangle requires different steps and tools than solving an SAS triangle. But rather than teach you separate prescriptive procedures for solving each type, I'm going to show you the tools we use and encourage you to just attack the problem, applying whichever tool works in a situation. I promise solving triangles is easier than memorizing procedures. So I'm going to show this list and go over it, not because it's going to help us solve triangles, but because you're likely to see them in textbooks or other videos. There are only two of these that are even remotely interesting or special, and I'll call them out when we get to them. The AAA triangle is one for which we know only the three angles. Ironically, the list starts with one of the two special cases. AAA triangles are special because they cannot be solved. There are infinitely many similar triangles, all of different sizes, having the same three angles. So without knowing at least one side, a triangle cannot be solved. And angle, angle, angle is the only configuration where no side is known. Everybody else has at least one S. The angle, angle, side scenario was in our example a moment ago. We know two angles and a side that's not between them. This is symbolically the same scenario as SAA because the known side is not between the known angles. By convention, the AAS label is used instead of SAA. This configuration of known measures will have a unique solution and is simple to solve. We'll solve all of these, except angle, 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 in a few videos after we learn the new tools required. ASA is angle side angle. We know two angles and the side that is between them. This configuration also has a unique solution and is easy to solve. ASS is angle side side. We know two sides and an angle not between them. ASS is symbolically the same as SSA, two sides and a non-included angle. For the sake of propriety and to avoid giggles, SSA is the preferred designation. But let's not forget the silliness associated with SSA, because it's the second interesting configuration. They can have zero, one or two solutions. They aren't really hard to solve, they're just some extra easy steps involved. But you might remember they're a special case because they're a pain in the SSA. SAA is logically the same as AAS, which we covered earlier. AAS is the more common notation. SAS is side angle side. We're given two sides and the angle between them. Unique solution, easy to solve. SSA, we've already covered, the same as ASS, but more appropriate for mixed company. A special case because there can be zero, one, or two solutions. SSS is side, side, side. We're given three sides, but no angle. This triangle has a unique solution and is easy to solve. These configurations that have unique solutions can be used to prove two triangles are congruent. For example, if we can determine that two triangles have the same side-angle-side measurements, then we've indirectly proven that they're congruent, because each one will have a unique solution which must be equal to the other. 
Using these configurations to prove two triangles to be congruent is a geometry topic, not a trig topic, so I'm not going to go into detail. But solving a triangle given three measures is definitely a trig topic. Some textbooks or instructors will present you with a step-by-step -step plan for solving each of these configurations. In keeping with the theme of this series, there's no need to memorize something if you understand the concepts and can figure it out quickly. So I'm going to show you two new tools needed to solve these triangles, and you can apply them without remembering any particular strategy. So you need to know what these three-letter abbreviations mean because you'll see them a lot. But as a rule, we won't be referring to them when solving triangles, except we might be on the lookout for SSA triangles, which we'll get to in TR-30. In the next video, TR-28, we'll introduce the first new tool, the Law of Signs.